All right, all right, all right. It's Tuesday. Tuesday during a very choppy week. Yesterday we had a uh, choppy day. We got a couple of trades off yesterday. Um, if you traded with me at 9 o'clock, um, I go live. I'll do that every day and um, share my trades with you and show you exactly what a trader does. Um, so, hey, how to trade? Come and join me. So right now, subscribe, hit the bell, hit the like um, so that you know when I'm up and running. Every morning I put out uh, these little morning market meetings so you get a little bias. Even, even if you don't join me um, during the day, you know what the market bias is in various markets and you can make your decisions and pick your setups at that point. Um, so um, do that, man. Do that. Subscribe, hit the bell, hit the like. There's also some areas where you can donate to the page. Um, it makes it possible uh, and for me to uh, develop the channel. So I appreciate any support that everybody's thrown out there. Um, so the first thing we do every day is we take a look at the um, reports. Um, so what we're watching today is 8 o'clock. We got Barkin Barkin, um, the Fed Barkin, and he'll be barking about the market. And everybody right now is kind of on the same page. They want to talk the market down. Now, look, man, look through the bullshit. Because, um, so look around you. Don't worry about the reports. Don't worry about everything that's going on. Look around you. Um, what do you see? How do you feel? Uh, I know things are hitting your pocket, but is it hitting your pocket as hard as it was um, at the uh, beginning of the summer? And are things still climbing? I know things are very expensive and absurd, but are they still climbing? So um, don't worry about barking. Um, obviously, you pay attention to that for the market, and it's going to have that market effect. But look towards the long term, because you ask me, um, we've peaked on um, inflation. We're on the downslope now, and um, everybody's going to start behaving as such. So um, for me, for my long-term investments, um, I'm buying dips, man. I, I want to see every time we go down, people get um, overreactive. Um, I'm buying and um, more buying opportunities on the way. Um, another thing to watch is Red Book. Red Book, okay? Um, Red Book year over year. Um, for those of you who don't know, what this is is a look at the same store sales and how much they've grown year over year. And we'd like to see that number come down a little bit because that will be an indication that um, what the Fed is doing is working. And if what they're doing is working, then they don't have to worry about doing it too aggressively. It's having an effect. They could ease this baby down, uh, the, the, the economy. And um, we could have that nice soft landing everybody keeps talking about, which, you know, has my confidence. Um, then at 10 o'clock, and you got a whole bunch of stuff in between that, really not big um, um, market movers. Although housing price index, people are going to look at that month over month, year over year, because that's a big inflation um, indicator and uh, gauge. And that's something that the Fed's looking at because um, as homes appreciate, it builds wealth for a majority of the uh, Amer Americans, or at least more Americans than the stock market, right? More people own homes than own stocks. And um, that sort of wealth, they could access that through um, refinancing and um, um, second and third mortgages, um, which is fine if they're responsible, but that's their sense of wealth. That's where they spend. They send kids to college. They buy kids cars and shit like that. So they, they, they tap into that and their homes are almost ATMs. And um, if they know their home's appreciating 25% a year, 10% a year, depending on the, what market they're in, they're going to be comfortable pulling on those funds. So um, the Fed um, is directly attacking that, um, that source of wealth and slowing that down so that people spend less and they could uh, curb this, this inflation thing. Although, um, um, I mean, it's it's irrelevant because that's not really what's causing inflation. Um, <clears throat> so it's a it's supply side, but um, they'll they'll get around to that, right? And then um, we have the jolts. This is job opening, labor turnover, right? How many jobs and what the turnover is. So this is how many workers are hired, fired, quit, or split for any other reason. And uh, that's what they're looking for. And, and yeah, you know, this number getting hurt a little bit, too, um, will be um, a good indication that um, that uh, the Fed actions are working. And then later on, we have Fed Williams speaking. And so uh, a, a, a rough day with a lot of Feds getting in the way. Um, it's the end of the month. So um, lots of option expiration. 
Um, you got window dressing going on and all sorts of things. Um, and at the end of the week is non-farm payroll, which is a pretty big report. Um, everybody likes to follow that. And um, join me Friday and we'll trade that report. There's a very specific trade um, on that report. And <clears throat> we'll uh, do a how-to on that. And uh, if you draw, join me live on Friday, I'll, 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 you'll know if I'm taking that trade and how it's executed. So um, again, subscribe, hit the bell, hit the like, and let's get to the markets. Um, all right. <clears throat> oh, what's going on here? Dave is not set up. There we go. Um, all right. First things first, we take a quick look at oil. Here's the daily. Um, it's it, obviously in an uptrend. It was very aggressive. Um, <clears throat> we had um, a flag trigger a couple of days ago. Here's the move up. And it seems like a little bit of a retrace, but I'm still very bullish on oil. Um, I don't see um, uh, a setup really on the daily. I'll probably let that retrace happen if you were um trading this with me you would have taken this break right here this this flag yeah you know right off of that hammer um but um still bullish letting it go seeing if it tests that 9983 area and i think this is um oil's channel so um you might be able to plot this channel out and and get some trades off on that but uh hey to surmise we had a good daily move yesterday. I'm remaining bullish on oil. And gold, 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 gold. What can I say about gold? I mean, it's just grinding its way back and forth, staying in this consolidation. Yeah, you know, there's, uh, I'm not doing anything. I mean, that's a nice bearish engulfing. How you play a bearish engulfing is you wait for um, the break of the high or the low. You could take the break of the high or low. Here's a good consolidation. If it consolidates here, that gives you a good entry for tomorrow. So watch this. Maybe uh, you see an entry in it tomorrow. Um, but overall, I mean, I, I don't know. It's just a consolidation. There's nothing. I haven't seen anything good in oil and gold in um, quite some time. Um, that brings me over to my favorite bad boy, bonds. I like trading bonds. There's good money in bonds. Um, <clears throat> we triggered a bear flag yesterday or a couple of days ago. Um, and we're still in that bear flag. It should have tested right here. This is not really how you want to see it uh, behave. I would have expected that um, that we saw some follow through on that. I'm still bearish on bonds, but I don't like the way that flag's behaving. Right here's the flag right here. That's the trigger right there. It should have came down, pushed. Should have given us a test and break break this pivot low right here. Hmm. This is really actually, you know, this is this is because of the week that we're in. And this is what I'm seeing when I'm doing day trades. I see a really obvious setup and I take that setup and it just doesn't behave the way it should. Um, so the, there's really no volume or momentum behind any of, any of the setups. Um, but I'm going to hold uh, my bearish um, um, bias on bonds. And I just want to take a quick look at... Um, that 240 um there it is there it is okay so we have this little micro trend right here that i'm kind of watching i don't know man kind of looks like it's getting ready for a reversal You know what, man? I'm 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 probably shifting to a neutral um bias on bonds, so I'm just gonna watch it. I'm not getting too aggressive um on the the bearish end. Um, and then what else we got? Last but not least, we got bit 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 Bitcoin. Um, I don't know. Can we call this a reverse micro trend? Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna watch this for a higher low and see if I see a trend reversal happening because that's kind of what I'm feeling right here. Um, a little on this very short move. I mean, this is not a, really a bad move from that 25. I'm looking for a trend reversal right here, to tell you the truth. I'd like to see it dip back down, maybe 200 points or so, and then um, turn around and break the high. I'll see how aggressive. I'll see what that uh, bar pattern looks like. Maybe it'll give me a hammer, much like this. Um, somewhere over here, and then I'll look for that because um, I mean my momentum is is is, is giving me a trend reversal indication, and 
I don't know. Yeah. It, well, we filled this gap, and you had the hammer. We're coming off of a little support area. Yeah, I'm going to watch it. I have a slight bi um, bullish bias on Bitcoin right now, but I'm going to watch that for a trend reversal um, right there. Um, and what else we got? Did we talk about uh, SPX yet? No, I don't think we did, did we? Let's play back the videotape. All right. Um, so, yeah, this one's kind of obvious. Right here is the break of the head and shoulders. Based on the head and shoulders, I'm looking for about nine. 950 area um some people are calling it 4000 um i'm saying um 3950 is is my target i guess in a move like that what the hell is 50 bucks one way or the other but yeah i think the 3950 is a, a good target i was thinking we'd see that move today um but nope 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 not unless we have a crazy turnaround um, yeah, you know, and this is a, a, a classic bear flag here. So the trigger of the bear flag, right? This is today's bar. Is it not? Yes, it is. This is the 30s bar. And um, yeah, we're up uh, 34 points. So the trigger right now on the bear flag is this low. And I'll tell you what, man, if we get down there now, that's that that's quite a move. Um, yeah, you know, that'll already be 30 points. So figure, yeah, you know, it's going to be one of those days. We'll probably take out that 4,000 today if we turn around and, and trigger that flag. Um, the 3,900 might be tomorrow, but again, um, we got, we got non-farm payroll at the end of the week. We got all the traders out in the Hampton. So, uh, who knows, who knows, who knows? I know. That's why you keep checking in, right? Um, I'll just be one of those, uh, internet traders where buy more, um, Amazon. Oh, that's a one minute chart. That's really not going to give us uh, a lot of insight. Amazon, yeah, it's feeling heavy, and you get that gap there. Yeah, don't be surprised if it closes the gap. I don't see a setup right now on a daily. Um, it looks like it's putting in a flag. Yeah, this is the 29th, so um, yeah, we're up a little bit today. Yeah, we're probably building a bear flag, but it looks like everybody's getting ready to close that gap right there. Watch that for the long term. Apple. Yo, look at that hammer, huh? Hammer, hammer. Hammer. Um, is this showing me extended hours? How come I'm getting extended hours on some? No, that's yesterday's, man. Um, yo, that looks like a reversal uh, doji to me. Oh, there you go. Okay, so obviously the software is a little glitchy today. Um, and I'm not getting the data I should be getting. Yeah, what's an inverted shooting star, man? Because that's what that looks like. I wonder, um, I'm not familiar with the pattern of an inverted shooting star. Got to look at that. Um, so, I'm going to have to say um, a little bullish on Apple. Short-term bullish. I mean, you, you know, obviously we got a high, lower high. Uh, uh, lower low, lower high, lower low. So it looks like the beginning of a downtrend, but I think it's going to roll into consolidation based on that that pattern right there. But again, you know, this week, it's hard to call it, you know, because uh, they're just not behaving um, um, appropriately, each, each setup. So yeah, trade very conservatively this week. Um, that's what I'm doing. I'm using small um, size and... and just chipping away at stuff, trying things out. If you traded with me yesterday during the live stream that starts at 9 o'clock, um, you would have um, known that I traded small. I took a couple of small pieces, um, two trades, and we picked up like maybe 750 bucks per contract. Or if you um, traded one contract, actually, that's what it was. If you went, traded one contract, because I trade in units, uh, units of three. If you traded one contract um, in units, um, so that would have been three contracts overall. Um, you would have made seven hundred and fifty bucks. So you know, if you did ten contracts, you would have made seventy five hundred bucks. Um, <clears throat> ten contracts per per unit. Um, so anyway, um, I took a small piece. We made a few bucks on a three unit uh, trade. 
two times, but the trades popped right back, man. It ran a little bit. I got one or two um, units off, and then it turned around and, and knocked me out. And they were, I mean, obvious setups, you, you know, obvious um, um, uh, bear flags and everything like that. So they, they really should have run. And uh, the reason they kicked back was that there's just no volume, no momentum in the market. There's a lot of, you, and the feel of the market, you could tell there's a lot of um, algorithm trading, um, but very few um, traders out there. So, so anyway, that, that's my point about this trade. I mean, it could just end a consolidation. It doesn't, it's just so hard to tell, so hard to tell. Um, let's take a look at uh, Microsoft because, yeah, you know, these big bad boys, they kind of give you some insight. And this one looks the same as Amazon. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to see. And Tesla, he probably looks a little different because he has some, um, some catalyst behind them. But, um, yeah, it's just in a big old consolidation. I mean, there's really no major expansion on the, the company. So you'd have to drill down and probably find a decent trade within um, the day. But this is a 60. I'm going to take a look at the daily and see what the daily's telling me. Ain't telling me nothing. Look, so, um, you know, here's a double top with a nice break of the trend, and it breaks and pops back. Now, you could call this a last kiss and um, try to trade this, right? So you would wait for the next bar to break this low right here and then see if it comes back down. You got a little gap in there that would be a nice target, and it's in a congestion area, so that'd be a nice target. You could watch that. But, hey, with that double top and that break right there, that bit should have run. Um, you could also wait for a break of this um, resistance right here. Yeah, You know, here's a test right there. There's a test right there. You got two good tests. You could call that a good resistance and see if that baby uh, pushes on a break down there. And then, obviously, uh, well, support. I'm sorry. Did I say resistance? Obviously, um, that's resistance right up there. Let's put a, um, let's put a support line in, shall we? Let's get rid of this line and make that a resistance line. Oh, that is a resistance line. It's red. Um, so, yeah, I got them color-colored So because uh, I, I do that. I'm a dyslexic, by the way. So, um, so, yeah, you know, I'll be telling people to make a right turn, and I mean left. And, yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. It makes my life colorful. So, um, so... So there it is, man. There it is. There it is. That's the channel for Tesla. What more could I say, right? I'm tired of hearing my own voice. So yeah, you know what? Subscribe, hit the bell, hit the like, join me at nine o'clock, get some trades off, um, throw some comments in there. Uh, there are links in the bottom of the page to help support the page. And remember, man, you should be calm and cool when you trade today, um, today, this week, trade light, man. Trade light. If you're just trading one, one, uh, uh, I trade options. So, um, or, or at least on the 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 the, um, the the channel, I'm trading options. So, um, yeah, you know, it, trade light. Um, if you're doing a unit, just do three contracts, one, one, and one. Um, and if you can't handle that, I mean, you could go two con two units, you know, and you take one off. And and if you join me at, at one o'clock, you at nine o'clock, you'll see how I trade. But um, if you if it's beyond your reach. Um, if two units are normally your trade, then don't trade. That's all. You, you know, part of trading is knowing when not to trade. So just sit back, watch the market. I mean, the, every day you're looking at it, every day you're watching the action, you, you're refining your skill. Don't sit there and be like, oh, man, if I took that trade, I would have made this much money. Yeah, you know, that's neither here nor there. You didn't take the trade. You didn't take the trade because you're doing risk management. That's a good part of trading. Don't beat yourself up over the money you didn't make. Um, and don't put yourself in a position um, because you have to get in, you got to make some money. If you got any emotion in your trade, you're not doing it right. So, um, anyway, um, let me wrap it up. Subscribe, hit the bell, hit the like, and catch me at nine o'clock.